Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. I'm sorry for the that we've had some technical difficulties. Um, I'm just going uh, to, unfortunately, I, I was hoping that we would have some more of an opportunity to have interaction and some Q&A, but um, I guess I'll just talk at you a bit um, for 15 minutes and let you know about the baseline protocol project that Chainlink and um, uh, 14 other companies um, are involved in. Uh, and that, and that hopefully you saw, if you didn't see the announcement, go uh, look for baseline protocol or hashtag baseline proto on uh, Twitter and you'll see a bunch of stuff. Um, I guess my, my purpose for this call is to make sure that everybody there in the room that has an interest in contributing to this work um, after I describe it to you, uh, has uh, you know has the motivation and the chance to get over to um, uh, a, 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 to the website, which is just baseline-protocol.org, um, to sign up and be involved. Also, if you look at the press release, which is pretty easy to find on um, consensus.net/press um, or gosh any, anywhere, you know, just do a Google search. You'll see a lot. Uh, you'll see the press release, and there's a, a Google form sign up that will allow you to get an alert when we open up the repo. So that's uh, just to make sure I get that out out of the way up front. And please, uh, Charles and team, uh, please uh, you know uh, go off mute and uh, interrupt me with any questions. I love questions. Uh, way more more fun for me to uh, respond to a question than to uh, to talk. Um, so let me tell you about baseline. I'm not sure what you know about it, so I'll give you the basics. The notion here is that in, and it's, it, it, I'm going to say up front, the, the, the notion is a very boring one. In fact, after five years of hype, it might be, uh, the most exciting thing is to, is to embrace some boring in blockchain and in particular in the notion of the main net. So uh, I was uh, one of the founders of uh, uh, something called Hyperledger Fabric and um, kind of saw the light and went over to work with Joe, Joe Lubin on uh, what I like to call the main net. I don't call it Ethereum so much as I call it the main net. The main net is the always on state machine that other state machines can use to do what distributed systems 101 tells you, you need a common frame of reference to have two separate state machines work together, or two or more, uh, in a coherent way. You don't want deadlocks, you don't want race conditions, you don't want uh, non-determinism and other issues. You need to have a common frame of reference. Either one system has to uh, you know, report into the other one, uh, you, know, you need a primary and secondaries, or you need to uh, use some kind of middleware. Um, in the enterprise, where I, I usually live, um, although not always, I've had, a, I've had three startups um, help start the whole ride sharing thing back in, in the mid uh, 2000s and I had the first ride sharing company, um, proper ride sharing company out in San Francisco just before Uber uh, ran over us and um, which was fun. Uh, so I've done a lot of startup work, but I've also done a lot of enterprise work. And for this, we really need to get, you know, everything's going to be a lot uh accelerated if we can get uh, companies to start relying on public blockchain. And they are afraid of the word usually, and, and possibly rightly so, of the word public. So I don't use it much. I don't say public versus private. I kind of had a hand in causing that dichotomy and I'm sad about it. Um, it's not about public versus private. It's about the right tool for the right job. If you need a, you know, if you need to make sure that your private PII data is not seen by people that shouldn't see it, don't put it on a blockchain. Don't put it on any kind of blockchain. Um, terrible idea. That doesn't mean blockchains are useless. It just means that you know, use them for the right job. And storing private sensitive data is probably not one of them. Um, and this will be an interesting place for for Chainlink to play, because. Um, on one hand, you, you're, you, one use of chain involves spreading out data. Um, another uh, is just simply the fact that Chainlink knows a lot about integrating with systems. And in this case, corporate systems of record. 
So my argument is that if you have data, and this is the argument of baseline, if you have data in your traditional system of record, say SAP or Oracle or DB2, or something you built in the 70s that are, that's still running on COBOL, um, that thing would be, do you a lot more good if you could also not only know what you think you know, but know that each record in there is, or at least the important ones, um, also are verifiably the same as what your counterparty thinks is the, is the truth in their system of record. There's two ways to do that. You can either have a common single source of truth. You can both decide to set up a blockchain or Kafka or something else and, uh, and say, we have the single, we're going to put the single source of truth here and we're both going to subscribe to it. That's one way to do it. But then you have to trust that both companies, systems admins are not going to mess up uh, the, that privacy problem or the, the you know, it's, you know, security is not simply um, tamper resistance, it's also surveillance resistance. So now you have a single point of truth, but you now have 2x the threat surface because you have two sets of in, in system administrators who may get hacked by Mr. Robot and out you all. So maybe another way to do it is to leave the data on your own respective systems of record and use the blockchain as a way to keep to ensure that my record is the same as your record. And if you change your record inappropriately, we are no longer entangled. It's kind of like quantum entanglement for data. And you can also do that with business logic. The business logic my system ran uh, had the same inputs, did the same operation, deterministic like got the same output as the thing that you ran. We didn't all run it on a common singleton. We did it separately and then used a piece of middleware as the um, synchronization factor. Um, that gets especially, it's, it's kind of boring even that um, when, when you're talking about a single record. And please interrupt me if I'm going into the weeds here. So if, if I'm losing the audience, I have no idea because I can't see you and I can't hear you. Um, so I don't know if anybody's throwing uh, fruit at the screen. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, just the, yeah, the message here is Hey, wait a minute. If we need a common frame of reference, we've got one. It's called the mainnet. It's always on. It's all it, you don't you can't get locked out of it, and you can pay as you go. So the boring, simple proposition to a conservative, security-minded uh, CISO or CIO or CTO of a company with a lot to lose if they screw that up is hey, you know, you get a lot of value out of synchronizing with your with your counterparties. Right now, you're doing it already. You're buying. IBM MQ or, you know, you know, doing other things with, with uh, bars and uh, charging, who are charging you an arm and a leg to set these systems up for every single new um, relationship, um, which is expensive. And you only wind up doing it for your biggest, most regular um, uh, trading partners. Or you can say, no, you, we can use this thing. It's always on. It's like the internet. It's the main net, capital M for the capital internet. It's not for everything, it's slow, it's inefficient, just like IP, TCP IP is as well. But it's repeatable, we, it's always there. And we can use it in such a way that people looking at it, not only won't know your identity, won't know that anything's happening because we can make it look, sound like a metronome and look like, uh, like, like noise. Um, and the data never went there. All that went there was um, what we call baseline proofs. And uh, those proofs are done. Importantly, this is not proof of existence. This is, you might say, proof of, con of, 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 uh, con of consistency, where you can't go from work step one to workflow step two without not only um, uh, having consistency, but adhering to the rules of the previous work step. And that, in, in that way, you can have workflow integrity, but co atomic compartmentalization of awareness down to the record or the business logic function. Um, so that, for example, um, in a supply chain, you and I might know a lot about each other's, um, you know, get, getting to, say, shipping. But we don't want the shipper to know about our relationship as a buyer and a supplier. Uh, imagine that I'm making something that competes with Amazon. 
just, I mean, I'm not picking on Amazon there, you know, uh, but just as an example, they make products, they ship products. I don't think I want as a competitor to one of their products, that company to be able to look in their own database and figure out my volumes and my flows and my customer relationships. It's a terrible idea. What if instead, but I, uh, the problem is I need their delivery date and a, lot, and a lot more data, in fact, to calculate things like my invoice to the buyer. I need to say, hey, we, I, yep, I was two days late and our agreement says that I have to give you a 10% discount. I need that verified date to come off of the shipper. But could I get it so that the shipper doesn't really know anything about me? And the answer is yes. You can use it. Again, you could use any um, form of enterprise service bus, any message bus. And that's why, you know, the baseline protocol is now replacing the notion of the magic bus. I've been calling this stuff the magic bus because I think the main net is basically a, a, magic, a bus, um, hub sub, key value pair, um, uh, message bus, um, not really a message queue, but a message bus that is always on. It's always running. It's got some magical properties too, because it's tamper resistant in ways that other buses aren't. So we put that, so the Amazon can dead drop that date onto the topic of the baseline proof um, without really knowing much about what else is going on in that workflow, except for that they have to do that because that was the smart contract or that, that was the agreement that we arranged. So that, um, that date goes onto the, um, onto the message bus or in, in this case, yeah, in, onto the mainnet. Uh, through the baseline protocol process, which involves a lot of, uh, you know, it, it does involve um, some zero knowledge work, but mainly to create a shield contract where these uh, proofs can go in and further obfuscate what's going on and who's involved. Um, and you, you can then tokenize those, those proofs by making them the payload in things like ERC 721s. Um, so you can move those around, but now you not only have a a private token, you have a stealthy token. So there's really nothing to be learned from the thing that, from that thing moving around inside of a shield contract. I hope that makes some sense. Um, and, and, and let's just close that point. Then that date is now able to go into my function verifiably, and I can now generate my invoice. And short of them opening up the uh, box and seeing that I'm the uh, the company name on the on the on the product, um, I would, in theoretically at least, uh, be able to use a competitor as a shipper. That's just one of like a million uh, cases of where atomic compartmentalization without silos is a big deal. Um, but so the the magic here is change the way we're thinking about blockchain from place where we store data and run business logic to using a system that can handle data and business logic, but use it as middleware to keep the, the traditional systems of record and other blockchains, you can do it, you know, blockchains are also state machines, um, in a state of consistency and continuity uh, without giving up a bunch of secrets about your operations to people out there in the world. Um, and by the way, you know, I think that's the biggest problem, and I guess I'll, I'll end on this. That's the biggest problem with private blockchain is, uh, you know, if you think about private blockchain and, and you're, say, a big pointy hair manager somewhere, and you say, well, blockchain's like a secure database. I'll use that. Well, it's not, right? It's not a more secure database. It might be slightly more tamper resistant, depending on how you run it. But it's um, as many companies are as in your consortium, less secure against surveillance resistance. And... Um, and we know, all know how hard that stuff is. So, you know, use the right tool for the right job. Use um, shared databases where they're, where they're useful. Use and, and, and not giving up your, you know, secrets. Use um, public blockchains for tokenization where you can. Um, and, and we all hope for a world, I think it's probably, you know, a ways off 10, 15 years before everybody is so pervasively using uh, cryptocurrency techniques that we can really go to nirvana, which is, you know, I, I make an agreement and the money shows up automatically out in crypto in my account. Uh, until then, 
uh, a token is just a promissory note, right? It's just saying, hey, I, I have a right to this thing. And you say, well, I have a gun. And that's the end of that conversation, right? So until, until things are endogenous to a blockchain, I think that's going to take some time. Um, we're, uh, we're reliant upon these other systems. So, hey, why don't we get those other systems um, to use what we have and get used to a public mainnet? Um, I happen to think Ethereum is a good candidate for that job. But again, it, the important thing is the specification. We need a mainnet that is resistant as much as possible to toll-loving trolls taking it over, changing history, or locking you out. That's the primary job. And uh, you know, Ethereum's pretty good at that, and it needs to get better. And the other thing I like about Ethereum is that it's really good at getting better. So um, that's why I'm a you know. But but again, it, I think uh, to be academically honest. Uh, I think we should ch choose the best thing to do the mainnet's job and focus on what the job of the mainnet is. Okay, um, that was my monologue. Do you have any, any questions? Any questions?